Come on in the room. <laughs> Come on in my room. Come on in this room, y'all. Y'all know we got to talk about it. Let me turn on this fan real quick. I don't got hot. Jesus is my doctor. Hey, 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 and this would be the one day that Fire Marshal John said he's showing up to service. And I told him that everything was under control. I don't even have time to give y'all updates on the building. Just understand nobody is able to use the restroom. All the bathrooms is messed up. We got special guests tonight in the house. And y'all decide to come up in here today and show y'all ass. Okay. Today of all days is the day that y'all decide to show y'all ass. So listen, if anybody don't know what's going on right now, there's a little bit of smoke going on in the, in the, on the internet between me and Tamika Foster, uh, Tamika Foster Raymond, Usher Raymond's ex-wife, um, an associate of mine from Atlanta. And I'm choosing to address this early on because it really ain't a thing for me and I'm really not going to allow it to become a thing so we did uh tonight's special guests by the way are shekinah joe and the legendary mr glenn jackson who are both um going to come on in a few and talk to us about the Bronner brothers hair show that's getting ready to go down this weekend but we'll get into that later let's let's get into let's get into what everybody wants to talk about and what's got instagram on fire right now uh as we wait for our guests to log in because i told them to come on by 8.15, by 8.15, we'll pull them on for about 15 minutes and then we'll continue handling our business. But anyway, uh, you know, since Usher did his big Super Bowl performance, so on and so forth, he's been in the media, he's been doing interviews left and right. And Usher did an interview where he stated that he felt like his female fan base did not like his wife, Tamika Raymond, due to her skin complexion, due to her being dark skinned and perhaps that they saw something in her that they did not like in themselves. And yesterday while in here, sipping on my water out of my dirty Taco Bell cup that I've been using for the last month, I think, without washing, I just wrench it out and stir it up. Uh, I got in the zone like I normally do. And, um, you know, I got to freely speaking as to why people did not like Tamika in an effort to debunk what Usher was saying. Just let it be known, it, it, the people generally did not like Tamika for reasons that were far greater than her skin tone. It was an attitude. It was old. I made comments about her body. I made comments about having stretch marks where I actually complimented them and called them war wounds of giving birth, so on and so forth. And, you know, I threw out the fact that I got Tamika's phone number in my phone and that Tamika is my friend. Okay, let me clarify that. Tamika and I are friendly all right, yeah, you know, I, I ain't never went around her house and ate no chicken. I ain't never rode in her car. We've hung out a couple of times. We've got mutual friends. We've, you know, had text exchanges and, and telephone conversation exchanges in the past. She's an, an, an industry associate. Nevertheless, there is or was, for me it still is, no bad, bad blood between Tamika Raymond and myself. This morning, I got up. I cut up the clips from the show, which I felt were the funniest clips of the show, threw them out there. And um, the, the one was, you know, the video clip of me saying all the things that I said about Tamika. Well, anyway, when I left Houston this afternoon, I went through my Instagram page and Tamika had written a uh, very lengthy, uh, poetic rebuttal to what I had to say. And you know what? I'm going to give Tamika all her flowers, right? Because... It definitely was giving an over 40 age and a fact a very classy read. I mean, she 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 gave me an old nasty Dominique Devereaux, Diane Carroll type read in response. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you can go to my Instagram page right now and take a look at T Tamika's uh, situation. I mean, at her response, I posted it with the caption that read something to the effect of, oop, I guess Tamika Foster and I are not friends anymore. Um, and, and, and listen, guys, um, and, and, and this is, this is no shade and no disrespect. Um, I, I, I have to be a man and stand in my, stand in my SHIT and, and acknowledge the fact that I did draw first blood. All right. I did draw first blood 
And because of that, I'm choosing to let it go. You know what I'm saying? Y'all know I always say you can't do wrong to a motherfucker and tell them how mad to get. All right. And based on the comments that I made about her, she got the right to be perturbed. You know what I'm saying? I uh, sometimes I think that uh, and I don't want to be one of those people who blame it on oh where I come from because I'm from this place. But I just think because of where I come from, we just have thicker skin, especially when it comes to ranking on somebody or reading people with their truth. And especially truth that's already been out there. It's like, yeah, ooh, it stings, but, you know, nobody's panties gets in a bunch and you live to see another day. Uh, everybody's not like me. Everybody's not my friend group. And I totally understand that. Um, so I'm not mad. Tamika read me back. And I'm going to leave it alone because at this point, and I'm just keeping it real, my mouth is very vicious. I've always known from elementary school that my mouth was my special weapon. It's what I honed and what I learned how to keep them kids up off of me. And y'all know what I say, when they go low, I go to hell, okay? And so at this point, I'm not even gonna make no response to Tamika because there's nowhere for this to go except to hell. And I just don't wanna do that. Like I, this is already probably gonna become fodder for the blogs and no shade, Tamika is such an easy read. Um. I would literally verbally destroy her and in doing so, it would probably do more damage to me than it would to her. So uh, with that being said, I'm going to leave it alone. But if y'all want to go ahead and get all y'all laughs, go to my Instagram page. You can see the video. A couple posts back down, it says, Usher says we didn't like Tamika because of her skin tone. No, we didn't like her because she was old. I think I said I said something like something to that effect. You can see that. And then you can see her response which was my last post on Instagram. Um, and that's that's just that. So I'm going to go ahead. And uh, Tamika, you got that one. You got it. It was very classy. Um, I started it. You know what I'm saying? I went too far and I'm going to eat it. Now, in my post, I said I would have gave her 10 cool points because it was dated and lazy. Uh, you know, y'all love to throw up that whole eviction thing and ain't handle no money. Chai, that was over a decade ago. So if y'all think that shit still hurt my feelings, keep on throwing those darts. Um, but you know what, Tamika, you did your thing. I'm gonna let you have it. Um, you know, whether you choose to want to remain on friendly terms with me or not, that's up to you. I mean, your presence in my life is inconsequential to me and I'm sure mine's is inconsequential to you too. So neither one of us will be losing anything. And quite frankly, we ain't spoke to each other in, in, in hell six, seven years. So that's that on that. Neither one of us will be losing anything, but I'm cool if you cool. And if you ain't cool, then fuck you. Um, with that being said, <laughs> we got our special guests down in the vestibule. Listen, they already down there with their mouth gag because they didn't think that <laughs> That F bar right there. We got the Ooh, you better eat. and we got crying ass Shakana Joe. Shakana, let me tell you something. The people said you can go down to the comments. The people said Shakana better not bring her ass on that crying with all that yelling Baby. and carrying on tonight. So Shakana, is you crying and yelling tonight? I might be. Yeah, and Mr. Jackson, how you doing? The legendary Glenn Jackson. Y'all show some love. How you doing, Mr. Jackson? How you doing, my favorite? What's going oh, on? I'm your up? favorite. Listen, I'll take it. Um, you know what? According to Tamika Raymond, I'm probably doing better than I deserve right now, but that, <laughs> that's all right. Listen, y'all. I uh when my, my people reached out to me and said that y'all wanted to uh come on and talk, I was super excited. You know, Shekinah and I, obviously, we know each other and go back. But Glenn, we've never met and and we don't know each other personally. But trust and believe, I have been a fan of yours from afar uh, for a very long time. And 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 and, and uh, it's just I'm at a loss for words to be in front of a beauty industry legend right now. But Glenn, for those who don't know who you are, please take a moment to let everybody know who you are and what it is you do and why we call you the legendary Glenn Jackson. <laughs> Well, I've been in this industry for over 30 years with the Golden Scissors Awards out of Washington, D.C. Thousands and thousands of beautiful Black women have descended on my stages over the last 30 years. Uh, I hit Atlanta in 1998 at the Bronner Brothers International Hair Show, invited by Daryl Bronner, the late, great Daryl Bronner. 
and my life has forever been changed. And I really hadn't been doing anything, you know, since post COVID, you know, I tell everybody. And so when I got a call from the Bronners to come and be a part of their 77th anniversary, I, I just have to tell you, I was honored. Mm -hmm. I was just honored to be a part of it because they are black legacy. They are legendary in this market. More African-American stylists and beauty professionals have become successful because of this platform. And I wanted to do my part to celebrate their story. Most definitely. We thank you. Shekinah Joe. you need no introduction to my audience. Everybody knows who you are. First and foremost, Shekinah, the, co the comments are lighting up. Everybody's saying Shekinah is sitting, her makeup, her face. Is how are you, how you doing, sis? I'm doing good. How you doing, my brother? Child, I'm, I'm doing good. But let's just jump into Shekinah. All of us, we are, we, you know, we know you as a hairstylist and you've, you know, transformed into many different things and versions of yourself since then. What does it mean to you, Shekinah, to be a part of the 77th Bronner Brothers International Beauty Show? For me, it's legendary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's legendary for me. It's a big deal. I, I thank God for the Bronner Brothers. Amen. Because they have opened so many doors. They opened a door for me. They didn't have to let me come sell my products there in 2012, 2013, but they did. So I'm forever grateful for the Bronx. And I just want to put it out there for a lot of girls who out here trying to start a business, makeup, hair, nails, whatever it is that you're trying to start. The Bronx Brothers is a place that you can come meet, greet, and connect with people. You mm -hmm. know, if you want to start a product line, there's so many people out here that don't mind private labeling you their product. But you'll never know. If you never come out and see. So I've so, met amazing people throughout the hair show. So I just want to get the word out there as well. You know, it, it's so funny because I'm not in the industry, but I've sat down and kikied and gossiped in many a hair salon. And I've he heard black women from the time I was a, a teenager and a kid talk about going to Atlanta, going to Bronner Brothers, going to Bronner Brothers. It's definitely one of those staple events in our community. Glenn, tell us a little something about the fashion show that you will be producing this weekend. Oh, my God. I mean, I've done this a long time mm -hmm. and I'm very seldom ever excited, you know, uh, but this has been emotional for me. You know, uh, I tell everybody I suffer from depression. So, you know, every day is a rough day on days. Mm -hmm. uh, but this has been such an exhilarating experience because we will be honoring the legendary Killer Mike. And he's going to get a Lifetime Achievement Award. Because, you know, when you become 50 and you have worked a business for years, so many hardworking Americans never get any kind of national acknowledgement for their hard work and dedication. So when he won those three Grammys, he sent like shockwaves to the industry that you can be 50 and still fabulous and doing it. So he'll get a Lifetime Achievement Award along with Bobby V, Bobby Valentino, uh, for their amazing track, Pipping All Over the World with Ludacris, mm -hmm. which incorporated Bronner Brothers into its piece. Nice. So then designers are descending from all over. Joseph McRae from New York City will be in the building. Mr. Carlisle, the amazing, legendary Afwa Sam is in the building. Um, Level Up Boutique is in the building. I mean, it's going to be legendary. We were supposed to have 30 models in this show. Over 200 models came from all over the United wow. States to be in this Brown and Brothers historic event. Okay, that's going to be very historic. Shakana, tell us what are some of the trends in beauty and in hair in particular, in your case, that you're looking forward to seeing, you know, brought out in this this upcoming show well i'm looking to go take some classes myself because cosmetologists you know this is the year that you have to do your continuing education to be continue to be a master cosmetologist so i'm looking into continuing my education you know i'm looking into meeting a lot of great hairstylists and barbers i'm just looking to see what i can see baby I know that's right listen I'm one trend that i hope y'all i'm hoping i can find me i'm sorry because you ain't let me talk go ahead go ahead okay so I'm looking for just don't start damn crying. Go I, ahead. I, like you saying, you know, I do the crying cry to a child. So we we all need to cry. Sometimes you need to cry, folks. Mm. Yeah, I've been crying a couple of days, honey. Crying is my soul, honey. Look, after you done read some girl, it done been plenty of nights I done watched your show. After you done read me and cried. 
Okay. Don't, cry, don't cry. Don't cry for me, Argentina. You know, you know how you did the other night when you called me at three o'clock in the morning. Shakana, y'all called me the other night at like two o'clock in the morning. Called me from two different numbers that I didn't recognize, and then when she finally called me from the number that I got locked in my phone, she had to get me together about something I had said. We'll talk about that on another doggone show. But Glenn, can you tell us about some of the designers that will be in this upcoming show? I mean, it is. It is starting to be Afwa Sam came to this country and she wasn't even a legal citizen left her children in Ghana and became internationally acclaimed designer extraordinaire amazing the amazing leon will showcase his amazing menswear collection you oh, know leon as in Cynthia Bailey's uh former husband and the actor leon no this is a leon local designer leon gotcha. here okay. in atlanta but he specializes okay. in in men's apparel and have been in the industry for over 30 plus years. Nice. So that's going to be amazing. And and then the expectants, you know, this is the largest ethnic awards fashion platform for the African-American black excellence in the country, expecting almost 5,000 people to show up in those doors. And it's so important that we make mention that so often the black community is overlooked when we start looking at corporate dollars and what black women do with their hair determines the direction of this country. Mm. And until these companies start taking accountability and giving back to the community, and we're not talking about going to social media influences and giving them $500, but I'm talking about real real estate in the market. We're at the Georgia World Congress Center mm. on this platform. This brand needs more corporate investment, more corporate dollars, more companies seeing the value and what these black amazing women like Shekana is doing in the market. You know, Glenn, you really said something so profound just now, and I'm probably about to butcher it, but this needs to be on a t-shirt. You said what black women do with their hair. What was the last part? What black women do with their hair really determines uh, the direction of the industry. Wow. The bigger companies like L'Oreal Paris and all of these big brands, you know, black sisters. When we started doing this piece at Bronner, the company Bobby Boss, I can remember, gave over $210,000 directly back to hair stylists. And why shouldn't they? These women work behind the chair each and every single day, making people beautiful. And this is a night that companies can say thank you to this community. And I'm just an avid supporter because if we go all the way back to the amazing days of either Annie Malone, if you don't know the story of mm -hmm. Annie Malone of St. Louis, you know, she didn't get as much play as Madam C.J. Walker, but her role was just impactful as it relates to Black women being empowered. They are more Black millionaires who have spawned from this space. So if you know Monique Rodriguez from My L, you clearly know mm -hmm. the story. You know, if you know um, Maisha Dillinger from Curls out of Dallas, she was the one that had the amazing show like Tabitha that traveled the country educating black women about salon power. I mean, these women define culture. And it has been a journey to make people know that if Bronner Brothers was not here, who would tell our story? That's that's that that's that's very powerful and so eloquently said. Shakana, you know, I feel comfortable asking you this question because one thing about you, sis, you real and you are not a hater. Who are some of your favorite hairstylists uh, right now that you kind of, you know, pay attention to or you big up or you high five, sis? Who are some of your favorites? It's a lot of them. Um, mm -hmm. My hairstylist, Quiz. Mm -hmm. um, Kiki, this young lady by the name of Kiki. Um, of course, Arrogant Tay. Mm -hmm. Of course, hair assassin. Mm -hmm. Of course, Cliff. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? I love Cliff. Oh my mm -hmm. God, is he not? I'm so proud of Cliff. I mean, mm -hmm. not only do he do wigs, he make hair products as well. You know, so mm -hmm. Cliff, uh, Jonathan. Um, it's so many women that I pay attention to on an everyday basis. Mm -hmm. I need my Instagram right here, so right I now, so you can look at them. And you know what? Oh, oh, oh. Daisy. Mm -hmm. um, and not only just hairstylists, I'm in love with a lot of makeup artists as well. My makeup artist, Tim, he's amazing. He did mm -hmm. this tonight, hey. And, and, and you know, what is Tim's uh, is social me. media handle? Everybody is in the comments right now talking about your makeup. So give us his social media handle. Tim's social media is TLC. 
Go ahead and take a moment and look at it's TLC. It's TLC. I want y'all to know it for real because he's so amazing, y'all. And he's so humble. Amen. And that's what he's about in life. Dylan. TLC D I V O. T I C D I V O. T L C is it Larry? Okay. T L C like the group Devo. T L C D I V O. Okay. That's what's up. And like um, I said, killer faces, it's a lot of different talented people. You have, um, oh God, I don't want to miss nobody. I feel bad. And why are you thinking about it right there? Those of y'all in the comments, y'all drop down in the comments and drop down some of y'all favorite makeup artists and hairstylists as well so we can share those amongst the community while you're kind of thinking. <laughs> um, you know, Larry, before I get y'all out of here, I, you know, tell everybody, um, you know, when the show is, how they can gain access to the show. And then what we can expect coming up from you in the future. Well, I, I'll just say, uh, Terrence well, you know, and I, let me apologize. I said, Larry Glenn, I'm sorry. Glenn. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I asked to the Larry, Sam, Freddie, <laughs> Jeff. It's all good. No, but let me just say this before I go into that. Uh, funky, mm -hmm. um, my friend, Joel out of Houston, Texas. She loves you. I love her more. And Joel. Joelle, yeah. baby. I love yeah. you, Joelle. Say thank you for all the love. I have to go to her house and just sit down and have a cocktail and kiki off of you. That's a part of the assignment. Okay. I love it. So I wanted to say that. You are, but... you are amazing though. Thank, thank you. Yeah. You, you love me. You have thank you. you deserve your flowers. You know, thank I'm you. Be, even though you be having your one too. But the truth about it is. I've been knowing you for many, 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 many mm -hmm. years. And when I tell you growth is something that we all have to do mm -hmm. and growth look good on you, baby, even though you read the girls, I get I it. I appreciate it. From then to now, I just want to tell you, I love you and I'm proud of you. I appreciate that, Shekinah. Likewise, and you know what, Shekinah? <laughs> you come a long way from when you was being, um, you and Tiny was on their bike, dragging on the ground and peeing my car. Wait, Shady, <laughs> I was <never laughs> dragging on the ground. I was riding like this. <laughs> 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 you gotta go watch the video again. Yes, stop. I was still on the bike. Riding with my hair flowing in the wind. Y that was such an iconic scene. And likewise, Shakata, your growth has been tremendous as well. And I love, you know, you know, you know, one thing Shakata I've always loved about you is that you've never, unlike everybody else on the show, especially love and hip hop, that come on there trying to be something. What I loved about you is that you've always just came on and been like, listen, this is who I am, this is what I am, this is what I got. And either you could work with it or not. And if you choose not to work with it, then fuck you. You know what I'm saying? And I think that that energy is needed. People can say one thing they can say about both of us that we have in common, good, bad, ugly, or indifferent. We are who we are. You can see us coming a mile away and you have the choice to either take it or leave it. And most people love us. They choose to take it. You know they love us. Until they can't take no more. I can't. <laughs> me and honey, it is what it is. But I'm really, really proud of you. And I mean it. Thank you. Thank you. So, Larry, go ahead and tell us before we get out of here. Oh, I'm sorry. Why are you calling you Larry? Glenn. You can never Glenn. say. You can never say enough about me to ever make me feel no kind of way about you. Keep dragging me, but I still love you. I love you more, sis, and thank you for being kind and understanding. Uh, Glenn, go ahead and tell the people. You know how we can get into Bronner Brothers, when it is, awesome. how long it's going to yeah. be, what the ticket price is hitting for, all that good information that they need to know. Well, of course, let me just tell you. Let me just think. Thank Shekinah. She has beat these streets of Atlanta with us. We couldn't create this success without her. Uh, she's a real girl. I mean, she's that girl. She is that chick. And she's not like some people that are famous by social media standards and not willing to work. That girl will put her tennis shoes on and she would walk into salons. And the success of this show would have not happened if it wasn't for her. So thank you. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, thank you. Like Glenn, uh, she was strong. Uh -huh. That was strong because <laughs> it was a lot of us that kind of worked together. You, number one, have did yeah. your absolute thing with holding the situation down, Miss. Listen, y'all could go make love to each other at the Holiday Inn after y'all leave my show. Can y'all please tell like these people? Uh, what uh, this uh, is? <laughs> okay, so the show will take place. The show will take place. Uh, the, the doors will open at ten o'clock on Saturday. There'll be an amazing show powered by Total Media Group, Kamal and, and Susan Donaldson. They will be giving away over $5,000 in cash and prizes. So some of those great makeup artists, hairstylists can come and compete. 
On Sunday, there'll be an amazing worship by the amazing Dale Bronner. That's the owner of the epicenter. That will be at eight o'clock to 10. Then they will have a spiritual brunch uh, for those people that want to go. And then we will close out the night with the amazing one enchanted evening, uh, which will all culminate at the Georgia World Congress Center, Hall B3. You can go to Bronner Brothers' Instagram page or you can go to their website. You can get a one-day pass or you can get a three-day pass or you can just come to the night show and be fabulous. There it is. Shekinah, before we get out of here, tell the people, um, what's next for Shekinah? And, and while I got you here, what's the tea, sis? Are you coming back to Love and Hip Hop Atlanta? Like, like, what's what's new for you? What's coming up? Well, if Love and Hip Hop will have me back, of course I'm going to be back on Love and mm -hmm. Hip Hop Atlanta. I never quit Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. And um, just working on becoming a better Shekinah Joe. You know, I own a funeral home, so I'm working you on do. changing to kind of convert over to this other person. But I'm happy that I started off rough so everybody can see what God doing for me in the process. Amen. And you see the progress. And you know, one thing people love Shekinah, and it's been my experience, they love a redemption story. They love rooting for the underdog. But I got one question before I let you out of here. When you was having your breakdown on the live and Mama D was like, you know, Shakana, anything you need, I'll come help sweep your flow. Um, I know you were saying something to me about the embalming thing. Who was Mama D finna embalm? Because don't you got to have a license to embalm people? You were going to embalm nobody in my facility. I got a license <laughs> funeral director. <laughs> I, you know, I love the devil, but uh -uh, I don't play like that. And at the end of the day, I have to make sure all my T's are crossed and all my I's are dotted because, you know, when you got all this stuff on you, people are, hey, so I would never do that. But Mama D can always come help me work a service now. I love it. Listen, let me tell y'all something. A funeral service thrown by Mama D or moderated by Mama D would be, you know, just epic, despite the fact that Shekinah's putting it on. And Glenn can actually put on a little uh, performance for when they walk the by, coordinate them, take the body to the graveyard. What a <laughs> walk, baby. Have our fashion fair fashions and so on and so forth. Glenn Jackson and Shekinah Joe, Thank y'all so much for joining me. This was a pleasure. And, um, you know, my man stay an hour away from Atlanta. I might just come to Atlanta this weekend and rendezvous with him and come on up to the show and slap five with y'all and we go eat some yeah. chicken and drinks. Let us roll out the red carpet. I just might. I, I just you might. Take me to Houston, though. You. Oh, that'll work. I was just there today. I took you to Houston. I thought you was. I talked to you, but I want to go to Houston. It's a deal. Thank y'all so much for joining love us. You. I love y'all and y'all stay blessed. Love all right. Right. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Y'all, that was Glenn Jackson. Y'all keep talking about who is Larry. <laughs> Shit, I don't, I, I don't know who. <laughs> I don't know why I kept calling Glenn Larry. Uh, nevertheless, y'all talking about my man. No, my man name is not Larry. I ain't telling y'all what it what it is because y'all. Uh, he don't logged off now. I um uh, I kept calling him Larry because he looked like he was a Larry. It was giving Pastor Larry tease. It was giving Deacon Larry Brown tease. I'm so messy. Wait till the people log off to start talking about him. Lord have mercy, Jesus. Nevertheless, child. Now his name is definitely not Larry. Let's jump into some more topics. All right. You know what? Ah, speaking of Shekinah and speaking of her funeral home, y'all, we have to take a moment. And um, a moment of silence and a rest in peace for um, HIV and AIDS activist Hydea Broadbent. You know, all of us, especially if you're in my age bracket, y'all remember Hydea from the Oprah show. She was a young girl who was adopted uh, and she was addicted to crack and heroin when she was adopted. And at the age of three years old, her adoptive parents and her found out that she had HIV and AIDS and she became she went on to become one of the biggest black activists um in the HIV and AIDS um space and she passed away uh either yesterday or today uh at the age of 39 um she was born with AIDS uh, uh or HIV whichever don't, don't don't get me caught up in the technicality at this point but definitely rest in peace for her, um, the family was deaf. The family, when they put out a quote, they were asking for, you know, asking for privacy. And and I understand it, but this is a real platform here where we have real conversations. And obviously, we're not attacking the family, but I I would be doing myself and us a disservice if I did not say, you know, we are all wondering how she passed. 
um, I saw a video of her. Uh, she was in the hospital laying in the bed. She They had just removed her trach. And she was speaking about how she would just love to see Chris Brown. Um, she did not look like she was in good shape. And I'm going to be honest with you. The reason why, call it nosy, the reason why I'm curious to know um, how it was that she passed is because in 2024, um, you know, HIV and AIDS is no longer a death sentence. You know what I'm saying? Like you've got people living long, healthy, um, productive lives with the medications and treatments and so on and so forth. So I'm just, I think all of us are curious to know if she succumbed to the HIV and AIDS um, or, you know, if it was something else or if it was, you know, organ failure from years of taking medications, we don't know. Um, but Hey, um, and to the person who said it's a bit tacky to speculate, I mean, I, I'm not speculating. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm asking. And while you may think it's tacky, you would be lying if you did not say that you were wondering as well. Um, nevertheless, we're going to move on and not make it about, about that. Um, speaking of Chris Brown, so a lot of people have been upset because Chris Brown recently came out and said that they invited him to be a part of the NBA All-Star Team game. Chris Brown even dropped emails showing how he was all ready to go, uniform size, what team he's playing on, so on and so forth. Got this man all cued and geared up. And then the folks came back and said, you know what, basically, Chris, we got to renege on our offer because, you know, we don't think you're a good fit. We don't want to upset our sponsors. And I think Ruffles was the sponsor that was cited. Now, do y'all think, because a, a, a lot of people, I, I saw one girl wrote, when Chris Brown did what he did to Rihanna, I was 17 years old. I'm now 30. You know what I'm saying? At what point, do we forgive Chris Brown or have y'all forgiven Chris Brown or is Chris Brown still canceled? I'm confused. I don't know what to do at this point when it comes to Chris Brown, right? Because I I'll say this much when it comes to the Rihanna situation, I'm over that. And I told y'all yesterday, unless it's rape, murder or something heinous, do not come up in my face telling me shit that somebody did 10 years ago. All right. Cause I'm not who I was 10 years ago. People do change. However, and Al used to point this out on TGIF all the time, every time we make a little bit of progress with Chris Brown, here comes another assault. We had the situation with Karuchi. And then, you know, there's always this random girl filing a lawsuit or whatever the case may be. So once and for all, are we canceling Chris Brown? Does he deserve to be canceled? Or can we forgive Chris Brown and move on with life? I'm going to take a moment and let's see what y'all say in the doggone comments. And it's funny because I know a lot of y'all saying it just wasn't Rihanna, but y'all know that that's the one that's the sticking point for everybody. We ain't really caring about the random groupies, despite the fact that they deserve to get all the love and care in the world and the support and me too and their women too. Y'all know good and goddamn well. You can't have nail one of y'all right now. Call the name of one of those other doggone girls. I will say this though. The decision to fuck with Chris Brown or not fuck with Chris Brown should have been made before they reached out to Chris Brown. And I understand Chris Brown for being upset. It's not like Chris Brown came to those people and auditioned to be on their thing. He was in his corner minding his business and they went out and got him and they pulled him into the ring just to turn around and push him out. So, you know, I don't think that's cool. And I think that those people should have maybe consulted with potentially who, with their sponsors, with who the people were going to be long before they went out and tapped the talent. They should have gave the people a list of potentials and had the sponsors. Um, but, you know, this could get really deep. There are so many other people out there who've done things, who deserve to be canceled, who still get a lot of play and press. I mean, and... To be quite honest, what Chris Brown did in real life is not far off from the shit that y'all be rocking and bumping to in the doggone clubs anyway with all this damn ratchet damn music. So 
I'm a little confused, but we're going to table that conversation and save it for another day. I'm going to put a poll up on Instagram later on if we canceling Chris Brown or if we not. Child, please, let, let's get into another messy thing. Now, I, you know, I'm of the school of thought that they need to stop selling podcast equipment, but child, Suge Knight don't fucked around and created a whole doggone podcast from prison, child. Suge Knight is on, in there telling everybody damn business on them prison calls. I guess he figured I'm not getting out, so I might as well entertain myself. And child, um, as it relates to getting out, Suge Knight told a story where he was on the airplane, honey, and apparently, <laughs> apparently, according to Suge Knight, left eye slept with Chili Man at the time, or X-Man Dallas Austin, and let it be known that she, she used the condom because you got herpes. Oh, my God. Suge Knight, I know you didn't just get on this internet and tell the people that Chili allegedly got herpes and that left eye said it out loud. And then, see, now... You know, I'm not being messy. I'm just drinking my water out my dirty Taco Bell cup. But it's got everybody like, okay, well, we know that Usher got it. And I don't have to say allegedly because that's in the court papers. It just make you wonder, did he get it from Chili? Did he get no um, herpes from Chili? Do Chili Coochie look like Chili? With them herpes on it. I'm just, do it look like that ground up meat that be in that chili at Wendy's when we be going to the club? And one of y'all in the comments being messy talking about if he didn't get it from her, he got it from Diddy. I'm not saying that. Diddy people, well, I ain't even worried about Diddy people coming to sue me, child, because they so sold up in the courts. They ain't worried about little old sissy me. <laughs> But the people want to know, did she get them, did he get them herpes from Chili? And is Chili Coochie somewhere looking like a Nestle Crunch Bar when she have an outbreak? Allegedly. And we just asking. And you see how Suge Knight don't start at all this shit and don't got people, listen, I, uh, 2024 is giving me, we all need to be wearing bulletproof vest. Because everybody just seemed to be catching strays. Chili don't even bother nobody. And now Suge Knight don't implicate her in this dead lady stuff. Child. Honey, they say one in three people got the HPV and the herpes anyway happened. <laughs> Child, let, let me shut up. Let me stop offending one third of my fan base, honey. <laughs> Do your coochie got bumps on it? Not me, girl. Okay. <laughs> Focus, Quentin. Focus. Anyway, we're going to run away from them herpes with some of them Trump sneakers. Is y'all buying Trump sneakers? Is y'all's? <laughs> is y'all hoes running out of the health department and running out of Planned Parenthood and running out of CVS and Walgreens with them Valtrex uh, prescriptions and some gold Donald Trump shoes? Because if you got that bullshit, you might as well be wearing some bullshit. Uh, is y'all buying... <laughs> Let me stop. I'm already in trouble. With Tamika, I don't need to be losing all my friends. Okay. Now, Chili, I don't make the news. I just report it. Um, them Donald Trump shoes. When it's all said and done, those of us who have young children in elementary school right now, or those of us who are going to have grandchildren in the future, Donald Trump will definitely be a case study in somebody's college leadership course. And in somebody's psychology course and the discussion and the discourse surrounding Donald Trump's cult like following would be people's ability to rise to cult like leadership. And, you know, it's funny because a lot of y'all are going to feel a way about what I have to say. Um, but. In an evil sense, Donald Trump is genius. Because it's only a few people in a lifetime who have the ability to 
galvanize people the way this man has been able to galvanize people and to garner their unwavering support. Um, he's a reverse Martin Luther King. Donald Trump is a reverse Martin Luther King in his ability to galvanize people, get them to follow, motivate them, and keep them on message. Do y'all know that those people, because he has to pay back those 300 and something million dollars um, in this case that he just lost it, those people went and put up a GoFundMe and were willing to help that man raise the money to pay off $360 million and something. Now, y'all can't name one celebrity right now that'll get slapped with a lawsuit that big and we will galvanize and come together and, and try to donate to help them pay it. Um, as many celebrities as that we know in the black community that, that needed fumes, that houses don't burn down, needed things we ain't even once think to put no damn GoFundMe together to help them. Um, and these folks will celebrate Donald Trump and give them his unwavering support. And I truly, outside of what it means to us in real life and how it affects us in real life, I'm really fascinated by all of it. I am truly fascinated at how people can be so hung up on this doggone man. Um, I'm going to move on from Donald Trump and move on to somebody else who is crazy, y'all. We got to figure out what all the hell going on with Wendy Williams. I'm going to have to call Morel Hollis. Morel is, is my sister in gayness and is Wendy's uh, former makeup person. Child, the people say Wendy don't been around the world and I, 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 and her family can't find that lady. Been around the world and I, yeah, yeah, they can't find that lady. Child, they say that Wendy ass is in a facility somewhere and that her family don't even have communication with her. They are, they do not have any way to communicate with Wendy. That's disturbing to me. And it's disturbing because um, how did this happen? What happened? Like, now is the time we need that messy ass brother who was stepping out, always speaking out of turn. We need him to speak to us and let us know what happened. Did the social worker come over to the house and 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 and, and, and Wendy was laying in the bed and they didn't change her pamper? I mean, what's going on that she was under the care of her people? And then now they're saying she's in an undisclosed facility. They can't even communicate with her. Now, a lot of people are suggesting that she is in rehab, which makes a lot of sense. Um, but I don't know, y'all. When I was looking at that documentary, it was giving me that the issues were deeper than alcohol. And granted, when I went to Florida State University and got my degree in economics, the people ain't teach me shit about diagnosing people and they damn sure ain't teach me nothing about medical. But... It's giving a little more is going on than substance abuse. It, it, it's giving me a dementia tease. It's giving me a disassociation tease. It's giving me a I'm losing my mental faculties tease. Um, and it's very unfortunate because a lot of us thought that what Wendy was putting on was an act in order to save her money. And it's starting to get worse and worse and worse with Wendy. And I hate it. I hate it. Some friends and I were having a conversation at lunch today, and one of our friends mentioned that there's a, a lot of people out there who feel like um, it's karma. They feel like it's karma. Um, but I have a question for you. If what Wendy is going through is karma, then where is Oprah Winfrey's karma? You know what I'm saying? Like, if that's the way it works, where's Oprah's karma, in the words of Stephanie Mills, for garnering Michael Jackson's support and trusting him being a black journalist, bringing him on his show, on her show, to then later bring, you know, the accusers that accused Michael of doing these unfounded things on her show. You know what I'm saying? Where's a lot of people's karma who works in the space of entertainment reporting? Um, if karma is the case, I, just, I, I don't think it's karma. I, I definitely think it's cognitive issues mixed with years of substance abuse, mixed with heartbreak. Um, and I definitely think that whatever she went through with Kevin and Sharina and that baby triggered something that was dormant inside of her, layered with 
the years of substance abuse, and I don't know, I'm only speculating here, but probably the uh, the the current substance abuse at the time of her having the mental break. I mean, y'all all remember that commercial from the 90s, this is your brain, this is your brain on drugs, and they break the egg and it scrambles. Years worth of um, drug use can do things to people, especially if you get predisposed to having certain mental conditions. So y'all, we're going to have to just pray for our sister, Wendy Williams, um, and hopefully, you know, things will get better. But as far as Wendy returning to television and returning to the podcast space, um, we got as great a chance of that as Nene returning to the Real Housewives of Atlanta at this doggone point. Um, how you doing? And last but not least, y'all, before we get out of here, I'm gonna let y'all out of here a little early tonight. We got to talk about uh, Vanessa Williams, y'all. Vanessa Williams, can you paint with all the colors of the wind? Terry, uh, Terry's money from Soul Food, uh, used to be married to Rick Fox. She is slated to play Miranda Priestly, the Meryl Streep character in the Broadway uh, musical of The Devil Wears Prada. And that is my second favorite movie in the whole world, second to Sister Act 2. Um, I will be taking my ass to New York to see The Devil Wears Prada featuring Vanessa Williams, y'all. So y'all please be sure to uh, check that out when it comes and be supportive. Y'all, the Bronner Brothers Hair Show is this weekend. For those of y'all unlicensed as hairstylists, y'all probably going to continue to be unlicensed and probably ain't even got enough coins to go to hair school. But please scrape up enough money and at least take a little piece of continuing education. You ain't got to have the paper, but I need you to have the skill set. Check out the Bronner Brothers Hair Show. Go on up there and cry with Shekinah. Do all that carrying on. There's going to be a whole bunch of celebrities and stuff in the place. And... You can always sneak in the back door as Frey if you wear a black shirt and black pants. All you got to do is just tell the people you with the caterers, and that's how you get in. Don't ask me how I know. Just go through the service industry. Just go through the service entrance, wear all black, and tell the people you with the catering company, and they will let you in the door. Tell them you catering or you security or you ushers, and they will let you in. That's how I get in the Georgia World Congress Center with a bitch and handle money. Back in the day, we find a way, okay? But y'all didn't get that from me. Nevertheless, if you new to this place, be sure to like and subscribe. And uh, put something in the Cash App collection plate a little bit. Uh, I love y'all. Oh, tonight is the first night, y'all, that I was using the brand new camera that I bought. It's the 4K camera. I don't know if y'all can notice any difference in the video quality. It's going to be really great when the light gets here. The light was supposed to get here today. It'll be here tomorrow. It's this huge... $1,500 overhanging light that's going to hang right there. We got that on the days that I don't want this microphone sticking in my mouth like a dick because I ain't had none in a long time and I'm horny. Um, I got the little mic like this now. I ain't even open it. out the fresh out the pike. It's fresh out the pike. And this is the one I could clip right here. So I got to have this, this thing right here in front of my face. We're going to have it all going on. All right. Uh, with that being said, y'all, I love y'all. Thank y'all. And I will see y'all tomorrow night, same time, same place. And uh, hopefully I don't get beat up between tonight and tomorrow. I love y'all and I'll talk to y'all hoes later. Bye.